Max and the Big Fat Lie, a book about telling the truth. Max's friend, Steve, had just got a movie. Slime Gods from Space was his title. Get over here soon, Steve phoned from his room, because seeing this movie is vital. Max wanted badly to see this great movie. It was sure to be scary and loud, but mother and dad would think it was bad, for movies like this weren't allowed. Max did his best to think of a plan. He thought till his eyeballs were sore. And as he was thinking and painfully blinking, someone knocked on the door. Max quickly jumped to his feet in surprise, for through the door walked a fellow. He was short and stump, short like a stump and equally plump. What's more, he was purple and yellow. Good day, my dear chap, said the short purple creature. You're caught in a fix, Allegri. I can see on your face that slime gobs from space is a movie you simply must see. My name is Sir Fib, and I think you'll find my service tends to be handy. Please do not question, just take my suggestion. A wee little fib would be dandy. Go tell your mother you're going to Stevie's, but change the show's title a bit. Pokey the cow is a flick she'll allow. Now go do your stuff. This is it. Of course Max's mother would truly was truly delighted. Pokey the cow with us would be swell. It sounded so good that if Stevie's mom could, the two moms might watch it as well. This was a shocker for poor little Max. He hurried upstairs nearly crying. If mom came along, the whole plan would go wrong and Max would be punished for lying. Sir Fib looked disturbed as he listened to Max. He said, this one's too big for me. But I'll have a friend for whom I can send. He'll know the answer you'll see. So he opened the door and whistled. Whistle somebody. It took... <laughs> It took a second, not more, for a tall, lanky guy with a, with a dark, shifty eye to quickly slip through Max's door. Yo, kid, said the guy, I'm Cleaver Deceiver, and Fib here has told me your story. I got what you need, and I think you'll agree that deceiving should wipe out your worry. Go tell your ma that you just changed your mind and you're going to play basketball with Steve. She'll fall for the trick. Then you go watch the flick. It works every time, kid. Believe me. Max hurried off with his new improved lie, which mother believed right away. She showed not a doubt. But when Max turned about, she had something awful to say. Since you'll be playing with Steve Malone, Mom mentioned while feeding the cat, his mother and I could just visit a while. I've been meaning to stop for a chat. Max felt quite ill as he slithered upstairs. This was a problem indeed. If Mother dropped by, he'd be caught in his lie which was growing as fast as a weed. Cleaver Deceiver turned terribly pale 
when he heard about Mother's new plan. She's a foe I can't bear, he cried in defeat. But I know a fellow who can. He leaned out the door and peering both ways, he called out, Hey, yo, big fat lie. And soon came a rumble, a thump, and a stumble that felt like a train rolling by. The creature was giant, all green and red spotted. It just barely squeezed through the door. When he sat on the bed, the whole house shook and stared, and the mattress sank to the floor. So this is the kid with the problem, it said, a problem that I'll take away. My name's Big Fat Lie, and I'll tell you why. It's because I know just what to say. Go tell your mother that Mrs. Malone got the Mongolian measles. There's phone disconnected, her toe is infected, and the house has just been treated for weasels. Tell her you'd much rather pedal your bike than have your mom give you a ride. Then she won't know where you boys really go watching the slime gobs inside. Wow. Plotting his way down the stairs, Max recited. He practiced his new big fat lie. His kneecaps were shaking. His stomach was quaking. But... He had to give it a try. Mother, he said as he tried to stay calm, I fear that there's been complication. Mrs. Malone is no longer home. She's gone off to visit relations. Their phones disconnected, their poodle got sick, and their home is attacked by a shark. So Stevie and I just changed our minds. We're going to ride our bikes in the park. Stevie had already set up the movie by the time Max snuck in his room. They pulled down the shade and built a blockade, and the room was dark as a tomb. Each time he heard talking or someone's shoes walking, Max thought for sure he'd be caught. He was still in a worry. The movie seemed blurry. It wasn't such fun as he'd thought. Max thought he felt someone breathing breath on his neck, so he turned and he got a surprise. It was Sir Fib and Cleaver, the clever deceiver, but the breath that he felt was the lies. After a while, he could take it no more. He jumped to his feet in a panic. He raced his bike home. But he wasn't alone, for the weight on the bike was titanic. On the back of his bike, Sir Fib and Deceiver, and heavier still was the lie. Whatever you do, said the lie turning blue, don't look your mom in the eye. Tell her that you were attacked by a tiger and trapped in a telephone booth. The Martians invaded. The planet was raided. Just make sure you don't tell the truth. Get lost, shouted Max. I don't need all your lies. The truth will work just fine for me. I'm finished with lying and stinking and spying, so you guys just let me alone. B. At that very moment, in one mighty flash, the lie and his friends disappeared. Max felt more relieved than you could have believed, for now Max's conscience was clear. Phew. Max told his mom of the lies he'd made up, how he'd been sneaky and bad. He said he was sorry and that she needn't worry. He learned from the lesson he'd had. Mom never let Max go see the slime globs, Though once in a while he still taunts her. But Max doesn't lie and we all know why. 
a lies like a big ugly monster ah, the lord detests lying lips but delights in men who are truthful proverbs 12 22.